The mosses, or bogs, of North Shropshire vary in size. Some are vast, like up at Wixall, but my personal favourite is much smaller. This is Wem Moss, one of the jewels in the crown of the Shropshire Wildlife Trust. It may not look like a particularly inspiring landscape, but it is. It's awe-inspiring. And I want to show you one of its most exciting characters. Welcome to the bog. So, why is this place so important for wildlife? Because it is. It really is unique. It's one special landscape. The answer is all around us. What we're standing on is a lowland raised bog, one of the very best examples in the whole world of an undisturbed lowland raised bog. The other word for that, or another name for that, is peat, and therein lies part of the problem. You can see it and feel it beneath you when you come out onto the bog. That peat has been cut out from bogs all over the country, but here it remains. When you take the peat out, the wildlife goes with it. But on Wem Moss, there is wildlife in abundance and there's one particular animal I just can't wait to show you. The viperous lizards are common on the bog but the creature I'm looking for eats these for breakfast. That is a fantastic animal. This is the Northern Cross Adder, the European Viper, or simply the Adder. What a beautiful, beautiful animal and a fantastic specimen of this species. This is almost certainly a female. They are what we call sexually dimorphic, which means you can tell whether it's a male or a female just by looking at the colour of the, of the animal. And females tend to be a, a more of a brick red browny colour. And males tend to take on that silvery grey blue appearance in amongst those universal dark zigzags and specks on the back there. Fantastic species. I, I just love these animals. The adder. Got a terrible name. Snakes have had a bad name since, uh, <laughs> since the Old Testament, really. Um, but there's absolutely no need for it. Adders, yes, they're Britain's only venomous snake. And in fact, they're in quite a lot of trouble in the UK. Their population is declining. Their populations are becoming more and more and more fragmented. And they haven't got those corridors that they can use anymore. So places like this, here at Wem Moss, incredibly important habitat for this species. This is the flagship species of this entire area, without a doubt. I'd say of the Mears and Mosses personally, my favourite by far. You can hear that that hiss. A lot of adders do that, no matter what species around the world. And that's just a warning. That's a warning before a strike. This snake hasn't struck out at me. It's not that concerned, but it's just letting me know I'm here, I'm a venomous snake, and I'm gonna try and intimidate you as much as I can. She's being fantastic though. Beautiful snake. Really good size for this one. This is about, about as big as they get. They, they get a little bit bigger, but um, this is about it. And uh, she's just out here sunning. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. She's sunning herself. It's going to be a hot day and uh, she's just out here sunning herself. She's, you can see how aware and alert they are. They know exactly where I am here. They've got these beautiful, almost beady red eyes and that fantastically camouflaged skin. Very difficult to see them. I've been wandering around for an hour and a half now. I haven't seen a sniff of one and she was right here, right out in the open. Very lucky. Don't think I'd have spotted any otherwise.
These snakes are the only snake that you can find in the Arctic Circle. Imagine that, a snake in the Arctic Circle, unbelievable. But yes, it's true. And the reason for that is they're very good at hibernation. They can sleep for long periods of the year and they don't need that much light to get them going. Especially in this country, they can be found um, when there's a patch of snow that's thawed in the winter if they feel like it's a good enough day to come out and bask. The other reason, of course, that these snakes are so successful is that venom. Now, when they envenomate their prey, could be a small mouse, small rodent, um, could be a frog, a newt, a lizard, love lizards. That venom goes to work by digesting the blood and the blood vessels within the body cavity of that animal. So it envenomates the prey, the prey runs off, dies, the snake then comes and finds it and starts eating it. Now, the clever thing is that venom has already started internally digesting that prey animal before the snake has even started digesting it itself. So it's already got a head start on digestion. A lot of the problem with reptiles in cold climates is they can't digest their prey, but this one can. It's all about respect. This snake is not suddenly going to strike out at me. She's not that bothered about me. She could have left if she wanted to. She's perfectly warmed up now, but she didn't. She was very happy for me to get down beside her and have a little chat. These animals are not slimy, horrible monsters. They're fantastic. They're beautiful and they are an integral and vital part of this ecosystem here on Wen Moss. She's just off on her way. I'm going to let her go.